Building upon the eerie sounding A flat 2 arpeggio sequence we looked at in a previous lesson, I'd now like to offer you a neat variation on this four note entity that introduces a string skip and a wider interval. What we're basically going to do is take the four note shapes, which are two notes per string, and take the top two notes, throw them up to the next higher string at the same frets. So visually and tactile touch sense, it's going to be very similar. And it creates this kind of like yodely vibe because uh, we have a major six interval, which has an inherently yodely quality. So you have a more interesting melodic contour with the notes popping more on top. Eerie, creepy, yodely all at the same time. Here we go. So last time I introduced this four note cell. Okay, that's A add flat two, arpeggio, A is a root, B flat is a flat nine or flat two, and then C sharp major third, E the fifth. Now what we're gonna do is just take these top two notes, C sharp and E, and instead play F sharp and A. So it's... And that gives us, you can analyze that as A6 flat two, because F sharp is the major six in the key of A. So we have flat two, six. There's your major six interval. Yodely. And then it's the root A double knocked apart. So it's really only three separate notes, but it's four, three different pitches, but four notes. So in our first example here, we're going. That's how I got out of it, right? It's always very important to resolve to get out of the situation. You know, it's like going into the Middle East and you have an exit strategy. <laughs> so. Kind of an outside sound to play in a, a blues rock context or like a funky rock type of jam. And um, now another thing you could do is, last time I showed you this symmetrical minor thirds thing where we took the same shape and we just went. We're gonna do the same thing with our new wide shape with the string skip. So it's, and notice by the way, I'm using hammer-ons here, trying to get a nice legato sound and uh, down picking the lower string and up picking the higher string. Outside the strings picking. That's how we end that figure two. I have you doing each one twice because you give you a little more time to get the muscle memory happening and then anticipate the next shift. Once you get it down, you can shift more quickly, like. There's creepy lick number two. Okay, now in our next example, you can just take that same shape, A6 flat two, and we're just gonna play it five frets higher Move it down a string. So instead of being on the G and high E, we're gonna be on the D and the B strings, and we're up here. Slightly uh, rounder tone, right? This gives you a more twangy sound. But then we're gonna do the alternating and tritones thing. Beginning of purple haze, right? So we're gonna take this shape, A add flat two, I'm sorry, A six flat two, and then do E flat six flat two. Sounds pretty crazy, huh? And this is all played over like an A tonality, like an A bass note or power chord or an A7 chord, A7 sharp nine chord. And then the way we're gonna get out of this lick is we're gonna go. Put a little English on that last note. Remember I said never bend with the pinky? Well, I lied. 
you can do it sometimes. <laughs> it's only a disclaimer. It's only a half step bend. And I'm backing it up with the other three. I'm doing that because I'm, I guess you could probably get your ring finger in there. Little shake. Albert King. For our next example, we're going to take that idea and just play it down an octave. So instead of going, we're gonna go. Now this is a different shape. Remember last time I showed you this shape. We're leading with the middle finger this time. So we're going middle and then ring, and then we're going back a fret for the index. Thank you, that's because of the way the guitar is tuned asymmetrically. You got that major third between the G and B strings. And then we're introducing the string skip again. So we're doing the same note sequence. A, B flat, F sharp, A. Put it together, you have. So what I did here is I just went three times and then I went back to this shape, which is the same as our previous example. Move down three frets. Remember, you could take all these ideas and shift them up and down the neck in minor third intervals. So you can go. In the printed example, I did this three times just to kind of prolong it. Get that little slinky hammer pull thing. Keep in mind, you could do this in any key. If you did it in the key of E, which is another great guitar key, you could start here. D, all the good guitar keys, the ones that don't have a sharp or flat in their name. Okay, now for our last example, we're gonna take a slightly different approach. We're gonna take this again. But instead of doing the hammer on thing, we're gonna do hybrid picking. Picking fingers, we're gonna go. Which as you can see is a very efficient way to play. I mean, you could just finger pick it banjo style like that. And you could try to flat pick it. It's a lot of work and a lot of movement there. So hybrid picking is the ideal thing to do. And we're just taking, taking our shape. Shift up three frets. Shift up three frets. Shift. 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 That's how we're leading with the middle finger coming down. So put it all together, you get. Kind of crazy, right? When you play that over A, kind of an outside thing to do in the middle of a otherwise inside solo. <laughs> Keep in mind also, all these examples I've showed you here are all based on the A half whole diminished scale. All these arpeggios, shapes, live within that scale. And interestingly, that last lick we played, if you look at this, the notes on the G string, they're basically walking up the scale. While the notes on the high E string are going. Diminished seventh arpeggio. So we get the diminished seventh arpeggio, and the half hold diminished scale. Pretty cool.